This is the Eurofighter Typhoon. This is the Rafales. This is the Gripen. And this thing is the Chinese Jetta. Did you notice anything? Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the things that we explain here you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. The fighters in the introduction are all generation 4.5 fighters, that is, modern and effective fighters, but not stealthy in configuration. These are the backbone of many air forces in Europe and around the world. I'm sure that you notice that they really look all the same. The general aerodynamic configuration is delta wing with canard planes. We have already discussed how the Delta Wing became popular in the 50s for its excellent supersonic performance, only to fall out of favor when more versatile planes with larger flight envelopes became necessary. However, the Delta Wing became the favorite aerodynamic solution in the late 70s and early 80s when the artificial stability resolved many of the problems that used to penalize the Delta Wing at subsonic speeds. If you want to learn more, there is an entire video about it, it's linked in the card above. Now we have another question to answer. Why the Delta Wing is almost always accompanied by four planes, or canards? as the French used to call them. And well, to be honest, it wasn't always the case that Delta Wings designed in the 50s did not use four planes, but in few selected cases. The use of canard has become popular only with the modern designs. So let's understand what has changed. Four plans or canards have always been very attractive for designers. Uh, the Wright Brothers flyer had four planes after all. The reason for this on the surface is quite straightforward. In a conventional configuration the center of gravity of the plane must be ahead of the aerodynamic center for stability reasons, so the tail plane must create a downforce to compensate the torque produced by lift and weight. Well, actually is more complex than this with other forces and other torques in play, but yeah, let's leave for the moment. Four planes, on the other hand, need to generate lift to oppose the torque. The lift generated by the four plane is added to the lift generated by the wing, helping to compensate also the weight, while in a conventional configuration, the wing lift must compensate for the downforce and the weight. Four planes, on the other hand, need to generate lift to oppose the torque. The lift generated by the four plane is added to the lift generated by the wing, helping to compensate the weight. While in a conventional configuration, the wing alone must compensate for the weight and the downforce. However, as usual, there are no free lunches and canards have also drawbacks that prevented their generalized adoption. The first point is that four planes are not inherently stable, while the classic configuration is. In general, aerodynamic surfaces placed behind the center of gravity of a plane or a missile are stabilizing. Planes placed ahead of it are destabilizing. To make a canard plane stable, the center of gravity must be brought well forward so that the main wing becomes de facto a stabilizing force. But if you bring the center of gravity forward, more weight will rest on the canards, which will need to be large or flight at higher angle of attack to balance it. In this case, the four-plane drag will be high, particularly at supersonic speed, cancelling part of the advantage. The second important drawback is that the canards generate their own aerodynamic field, which has an effect on the main wing. 
The canal downwash invests the main wing reducing the angle of attack at which it is flying. The wing itself will not be able to use all of its capability to generate lift, again negating part of the advantages of the canal configuration. These drawbacks made canards quite rare in the past since the advantages were not as massive as it could be expected by a superficial analysis. They were used in particular cases like for the XB70 Valkyrie where their purpose was basically just to help the rotation of the plane at takeoff. However, with the Delta Wing, canards were also promising some advantages that the designer were eager to grasp. The delta wing works in a different way if compared to with a traditional wing. It generates a lift by a system of vortices that suck the wing upward. Again, if you are interested in a detailed discussion, there is an entire video about it. So, maintaining the wing vortices stable and strong is essential to preserve the aerodynamic quality of the delta wing. If the four planes are themselves a delta wing, experiments show how the vortices from the wing and the four plane interact positively, stabilizing each other. However, unfortunately, when this happens, we fall back into the downwash problem, having a stable wing with well-developed vortices that generates just part of the lift it could without the four planes. So a solution had to be found and it came from an unsuspected direction. In the first half of the 70s, actuators and the theory of the control had progressive enough to create control solutions where the pilot input was decoupled from the control surfaces. This was the so-called fly-by-wire. Soon after, computers became fast enough to implement the flight mechanics equations and to be used uh, to control the plane. The pilot no longer deflected the surfaces, it just told the computer the type of maneuver it desired and the computer commanded the actuators to deflect the surfaces to obtain the required result. Uh, this was a radical revolution because it gave the designers a freedom that was impossible with conventional commands. And in particular, it was no longer necessary to have a stable design because the computer could maintain the plane stable by continuously adjusting its trajectory and this was something that no pilot could do safely. So, in this new era, it was no longer necessary to keep the center of gravity while I have the aerodynamic center to guarantee stability basically trusting the computer for the rest. In particular, if the plane could be designed with a neutral stability with the center of gravity roughly uh, placed together with the uh, aerodynamic center of the wing, little or no weight needs to be loaded onto the canard, which can operate mostly at the point of minimal drag. At transonic and supersonic speed, the aerodynamic center of the wing shifts a bit backwards, the four planes need to lift a bit to compensate, and in that configuration the lift to drag ratio is better than in a plane with a conventional configuration. Since modern fighters operate at transonic or low supersonic speed, the best performance of the Delta Plus canard configuration happens to be exactly in the sweet spot where it is most needed. This is the reason why today, for fighters and high-performance planes, the Delta Plus Canard configuration is the most used. If stealth is not your primary consideration, the Delta Plus Canard is the winning configuration. It is not the only possible, but is by far the most used. Okay, job done, you may think, but, well, we are not done yet. Some of you who are the most familiar with this type of engineering problems may be thinking, but if you can maintain the stability with a computer and the four planes generate very little lift, why do I need them at all? Aren't the wing elevons enough? 
Yes, they are, you are right. A delta wing can be artificially stabilized with the elements, but there are other advantages connected with the use of four planes if you don't have to put too much weight on them to keep the planes straight. The canards may improve the lateral stability, they reduce the sensitivity to the gust, they have lower supersonic drag than a conventional tail design, but most of all, they offer a possibility which is way less easily used by fighters with a relaxed stability but a conventional configuration. Delta canards are ideal to implement direct force maneuvering. A conventional fighter maneuvers by vectoring the lift, rotating the plane around the center of gravity by the use of the aerodynamic forces generated by the control surfaces. So, to turn a plane first roll, then pitches, then yaws, and then does the same to go back level flight. With direct force maneuvering, the plane may do without of some of these movements or it can just move in an unexpected way, which may be an advantage in air combat. Activating the flap and having the four planes lift suddenly at the same time increases the lift, making the plane jump up in the air. The position of the two lift points, while well forward and aft of the center of gravity, allows a better control of the torque than in a conventional configuration plane. That would if it tries to do the same, a plane with a conventional tail will probably just point the nose down and that will be it. The same can be done in conjunction with the increase of the angle of attack, which is useful to bleed energy to avoid overshooting in a dogfight. And finally, moving the rudder and the four planes differentially can generate a net lateral force that moves the plane sideways without changing direction. All these are maneuvers that would never be possible without the help of a computer in the middle between the pilot and the airplane control surfaces and if the control surfaces weren't far from the center of gravity. Okay, job done, you may think, but no, there's still one rather important advantage of having unloaded canards. Do you remember when we mentioned that the vortices from the canard and the wind would interact positively if only the downwash problem was not there? Well, modern configurations do not use a delta wing as the foreplane, so the canard only produces weaker wingtip vortices, still useful, but they behave differently. If the canard bears little or no load, it also doesn't produce the penalizing downwash on the wing. The canard position is often close coupled that is very close to the leading edge, which is beneficial to the flow on the inner section of the wing. This is another reason why this configuration is so popular today. So, if you like this video, you may also like those beside me. In the meanwhile, please subscribe, hit the bell, and if you can consider supporting the channel on Patreon and subscribe star, that would be awesome. So, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.